everyone, I'm Jasmine and I'm an educator at the Queen's Botanical Garden. Today I want to talk to you guys about some of the moths and butterflies that we can find in New York City. I have some specimens that I've prepared for you guys. And some of these are from New York City, some of these are from out of the United States. Starting with this guy, I'm going to show you how to identify the difference between a moth and a butterfly. So this is the only moth I have of all of these specimens. The rest of them are all butterflies. A lot of people think that we can tell the difference between a moth and a butterfly by looking at its color. For example, many people think that this great southern white is a moth because of its drab color. But if we look a little closer, every butterfly has antenna that are clubbed which means they're long, straight, and have a little thick part at the end. But if you look at this moth, you'll see that it has feathery antenna on its head. And this guy lost one of them, but normally they have two. And this is an African moon moth. It looks really similar to the Luna moth that we have here in New York City. And there are plenty of species that look similar to each other. For example, we have the monarch butterfly, which we can find in New York City, and the queen butterfly, which is found in the southern United States. Another group of butterflies that look really similar to each other are the swallowtail butterflies. If you look towards the bottom of them, their wings have a tiny little tail, like here. If you look on their dorsal or backside, it looks very different from their front side or ventral side. Even though these two butterflies can be found in New York City, you'll find a lot of similar looking butterflies throughout the United States and even South America. Here, we have three butterflies from the southern United States, the Atala hair streak, which is my favorite little butterfly, which I love to show people because this is an adult sized butterfly. If we look at this Julia butterfly and this zebra long wing butterfly, you'll see that they have the same general shape. That's because these two butterflies belong to the group Heliconius, which is another way to say that they have long wings. So the reason I wanted to talk to you guys about butterflies today is not only because they're so beautiful, but because they're great pollinators. If you come down here and look, you can see the proboscis of the butterfly, which is like a really long tongue Right now it's all curled up into a circle, but it can reach as long, almost as long as its body. This proboscis is used to drink nectar from flowers. As they move from flower to flower drinking nectar, they're also moving the pollen around. This helps the flower create seeds. This is really important because flowers can't just get up and move around on their own. They can't distribute pollen without the help of pollinators. Now, since you guys probably don't have your own butterfly collection at home, I wanted to help you guys create your own origami butterflies. The first step is to find a square sheet of paper with any design that you like on it. I wanted to create my own design, so I'm going to turn it over to the plain side and just put some decorations on it. Now you're going to fold it in half. both ways and you can either tear it or use a scissor to create two rectangles. From here, I'm going to put one of my rectangles to the side and fold the other one in half. Now 
After I unfold it, I'm going to take one corner and fold it to the center line. And I'll do the same with the other corner. When I'm done with that, I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. Now, I'm going to take this side and fold it again to the center. And do the same thing on this side. And then we're gonna fold it in half one last time, facing out. Now I'm going to flip it to the other side and fold it in half towards the center. Now you'll have something that looks like this. And you can fold it in half one last time, that part that was our center from the start. And you'll see it creates kind of like an accordion shape, right? The last step is to fold it in half. And you can see this will be the top part of our butterfly. And you can use whichever side that you like best. This next part is a little bit easier. All you have to do is fold an accordion from one side to the other. The last step is to fold it in half again. And you can see how this butterfly is really starting to come together. Now I'm going to take my glue stick and apply glue to this portion of the bottom wing and this portion of the top wing so that we can end up gluing them together this way. Making sure that the two center folds meet with each other before pressing down. While this is drying, I'm gonna take a piece of string Fold it, tie it around, and just tying it in the center. I'm going to do a double knot. At this point, if you want, you can put a little bit of glue right there to keep the string in place. I'm just going to take this towards the top and make a knot to close the loop. I'm gonna cut off the extra bit of string and that will create a loop for me to hang my butterfly wherever I want. Finally, our last step is to slightly unfold the wings Gently pull them apart and maybe even press them at the tips. So that we can see the beautiful pattern of the butterfly.